Hello everybody, my name is Asta and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are here kicking off a 24-hour readathon. I don't do these super often because I'm not very good at them because I'm not very good at staying awake, but my friend Haley is doing a 24-hour readathon for her Patreon today and of course I'm going to participate. It is going to run from 7 p.m. today to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Today's Friday, so 7 p.m. today, Friday to 7 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday. I actually just woke up from a nap to try to increase my chances of staying up as late as possible. I still haven't quite like come back to earth yet. I'm still a little bit hazy, but I wanted to film an intro before the readathon starts. It is 6.05, so I have a little bit of time. I thought I'd take you through what I'm hoping to get to throughout these 24 hours. The readathon does have a theme. It's a bunch of our favorite things, so each of these kind of represents a favorite of mine in a way. So I thought we'd just run through them quick. For my favorite format, I'm going to be reading All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, and I'm going to be reading it mostly through audio. I've been loving audiobooks lately, and I was able to get this one from Libby, and it's always good with a readathon like this to have one audio that you can throw on when you need to do some other things, or if you just need a break from reading with your eyes. So this is going to be my audiobook of the readathon. For favorite cover, I am hoping to get to Death Valley by Melissa Broder. This is just general fiction, I think. Honestly, I petitioned for Barnes & Noble to open a new section that's just called like weird shit because that's where I feel like this book would go. And I feel like a lot of books can be classified that way. This is definitely weirder than just general fiction, but I think that's how they brand it. I think it follows a woman who's like bumbling around in the desert and she goes inside of a cactus. So, you know, weird shit. For favorite genre, I decided to go with horror for the sake of this readathon and read Nothing But Black and Teeth because it's one of the shorter books I have on my physical TBR. And you know, it's always good to pick some short reads for these kinds of readathons as well because it makes you feel accomplished. It makes you feel like you're actually getting through your books. So this one, I don't know much about. I think it might be a haunted house story. Haley gave this to me because I was interested in reading it, so I haven't really looked into what it's about that much, and that's okay. I'll go into it mostly blind. Then for favorite setting, I said in my TBR that my favorite settings are anywhere that is an earth or like a place where people generally live. So for that, I picked The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling because this takes place on a foreign planet, and I love space and other planets and learning about that. So I'm really excited to get to this one. I've been really interested in this one for a long time and just have not read it, so very excited for this. This. And then for favorite trope, some of my favorite tropes are usually more like romance tropes, maybe just because they're more commonly referred to as tropes than in other genres. Actually, <laughs> I say romance, but I really picked a fantasy for this because I love and I love a good enemies to lovers and I have a lot of unread fantasy on my shelf. So that's a good genre for the enemies to lovers trope. So I picked Pestilence by Laura Thassala. I don't know much about this one other than that our female main character tries to kill the main male character and then he takes her captive and we're just going with it. I think this is like dark fantasy romance. So that is my tentative TBR for the readathon. How much of this I actually read will depend on on how late I managed to stay up and we're gonna be doing sprints. I don't know how long Haley plans to sprint, but there will be sprints for probably a good portion of this readathon. And we talk a lot sometimes. So if we manage to like keep a lid on it and actually read, I could get through like a good chunk of, of these books, I think. So we'll see. <laughs> how that goes, but I actually think I'm going to kick off the readathon listening to All the Sinners Bleed. This will probably be one that I go in and out from as I'm doing things, and so the reason I want to start with this is just because I haven't made dinner yet. Like I said, I've been napping since I finished work trying to like build up some energy, so I want to make dinner and eat and just like do a couple things before I really sit and like settle for the night, so I actually might cheat and start a little bit early because I'm going to go make dinner now, and it's only 610. So I might be starting a little early, but I'm just going to start with this one, get a good probably 50, 60 pages into it. Oh before I'm like ready to sit down and then we'll pick up something else. So I will keep you guys posted once we kick off the readathon, how things go, all the things. We're just gonna spend the next 24 hours together. I'm so excited. So I will let you know when I have like my first round of updates. <laughs> Thank you. 
we just hit the two hour mark of the readathon. It is now nine o'clock and I figured I'd give you a couple of updates. Like I had mentioned, I started out with All the Sinners Bleed. I was listening to this on audio while I was making dinner and stuff. Then we had a nice little intro chat to the reading sprints. That took like half an hour but i did still get up to chapter six which is page 67. this book is following a town where we are following the first ever black sheriff in town and he gets a call that there has been a shooting at the local school and that whole situation kind of spirals into the town and the sheriff or the police learning about a potential serial killer so far i'm really enjoying this one i was telling Haley that i was a little upset that i had started with it because my whole intention was to kind of spread this one out and like read a little bit on audio while i was doing things and then flip to a physical while i was sitting down but i wasn't wanting to put this one down down. I'm super intrigued to see where it's going. Obviously, I'm only like 70-ish pages in, but a lot has still happened and it's really set up the story really well that I'm so intrigued to learn more. But I did force myself to put it down because I just wanted to get through something else in the meantime. I would like to take my time a little bit with this one, I guess. Actually, that's not really true. I don't really want to take my time, but I feel like I have to because I just want to get through some physical reads before I got too tired. But then the next book I picked up, I ended up getting the audio for as well because I'm just needing an audio right now. I'm really loving audiobooks lately and I figured why not? I have been following along for the most part with this one but I started on Nothing But Blackened Teeth. I'm now on chapter 4 which is page 57 and it's 42% of the way through the book. This is pretty short and I thought why not just knock one out really fast in the readathon. I'll feel super accomplished having finished an entire book pretty quickly into it. Nothing But Blackened Teeth. We are following this group of friends who is at this old like haunted house where in the past I guess there was supposed to be a marriage there and the husband like never made it to the marriage ceremony he died and so the wife asked people to like bury her alive in the walls of the house and now this group of friends is there because two of the friends are getting married apparently the woman has always wanted to get married in a haunted house it's like five characters and our main character who we're getting perspective from her name is Kat and everybody seems to be like really treading around her. It seems like she's maybe had relationships with some of the guys and the bride that's there does not seem to like her whatsoever and there's lots of hints to like if she's not okay she'll tell us in regards to our main character so i'm very curious um what her backstory is what the history is there but it seems like this group of friends is not really friends like they keep fighting and they like physical fighting even is happening so i'm very intrigued to see what's gonna happen and obviously with this taking place at like a haunted house i imagine things are gonna get pretty dicey pretty quickly so i'm gonna keep making progress on this one i have 15 minutes left in the current sprint that we're on i can get another probably 20 25 pages in these next 15 minutes i got this audio on 2.75 we're just we're booking along so i'm just gonna keep reading i'll give you another update when i have more to say about this okay so i have now finished nothing but black and tea for a time check it is just about 10 o'clock so it's been like another hour ish this was a really quick read obviously and honestly I enjoyed it. The storyline itself I, I enjoyed. I thought it was kind of unique like obviously they're at this like haunted house for a wedding and then they end up kind of getting wrapped up in this situation where they have to potentially complete or perform a ritual like in order to save themselves. I thought it was good. There's not much I can complain about. It was only like 120 pages. I didn't really feel like anything dragged too much. Probably having the audio helped me get through it. You never really get much backstory on these characters characters like I said there's a lot of like hinting to our main character's past and like that she's got things going on but it's never really explained so I guess that's what you get when you read a 120 page story but I think for what it was it was an enjoyable time I'm gonna give it three stars it's not like the most memorable thing I've ever read by any means that's the first book checked off the TBR for the 24 hours now I'm trying to decide what to pick up next we did a little chat in between there but we're in our next sprint and I have about 20 more minutes and I can't decide if I should try to like read another chapter of my essay Cosby book if I should start a new one if I start a new one I think the two that I'm deciding between would be Death Valley this one partially just because it's pretty 
short. I also just think this would be a funny one to read while I'm probably half delirious because I think this is very fever dreamy. I'm not really that tired yet or anything, but I kind of have this one on my radar to still get to tonight potentially. And then the other one I would potentially start is Pestilence. And this is really just because I feel like this will not be that hard to read. I don't know if I'm ready to get into a sci-fi right now. I think that this would be better saved for tomorrow when my brain is a little bit more restored because I do plan to sleep hopefully at least a little bit. I do not run well off of zero sleep. So that's maybe a good one for like when I've come back from a couple hours of rest. That's where I'm at right now. I might start one of these or just because we're in the middle of a sprint, I might just read another chapter of S.A. Cosby just to get in a little bit further into it, not start something when I only have 20 minutes left to go. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll read one more chapter of this. That'll probably get me to the end of this sprint and then I can start something new next sprint. I think that's what we're gonna do. Hello, and it's almost 1.30. I'm not going to bed. We've decided we're gonna try to make it to 3.30 before sleep, which right now, like, I feel mostly okay. I feel like I can make it that long, but I may be about to make a grave mistake because I'm about to go get in bed for the rest of the time. I'm just sick of being on my couch. I wanted to update you because I'm now about 40% of the way through Pestilence. I'm on chapter 21, page 154. Basically, this book is following the world after the full Four horsemen of the apocalypse arrive. When they arrive, they just destroy society. Wi-Fi goes out, electricity stops working, cars and planes aren't working, like just thrown into a full force, basically apocalyptic situation. There's four books in the series, so one will follow each one of the horsemen. And this one following Pestilence, basically what's happening is that it's been like five years since the horsemen showed up. And from what they've said, it sounds like they like left, but for some reason Pestilence is back and he's just like riding through the country and destroying towns because his thing is that he carries the plague with him. Every town he goes into, like everybody just dies and so he's just like taking out the whole population. Our main character is in this town that has evacuated like they think they seem to know in advance that he's kind of coming their direction. Her town has mostly evacuated and her and a few of her like co-workers they were all firefighters but they had stayed behind and then they were basically like drawing straws but they used matches to see who's gonna stay behind because that person will probably die but they're going to try to kill pestilence on his way through and she ends up drawing the burnt match and she is the one that has to stay and try to kill him and <laughs> she ends up attempting to kill him and it goes wrong and he takes her captive now she is riding through the country with pestilence watching him kill a bunch of people and he is determined to like torture her because she tried to kill him. I am enjoying it. It reads really fast. So, like the first sprint we did that I was reading this book, we did an hour sprint and I read 90 pages in an hour, which is not like my typical reading speed. So it reads very quickly. It's nice because, you know, it is, it's like fantasy romance. I assume it leads more towards romance. We haven't gotten to that yet, but it does have fantasy elements, but because it's taking place in like the United States, in Canada. I don't know. There may be in Canada. They've mentioned Canada. I'm not positive where we are, but it takes place on Earth, obviously. And so you don't need to get all this information about like a new world and like some of the more complicated fantasy elements. I feel like it's written with a pretty simplistic style that's making it really easy to get through, which is honestly perfect for <laughs> this time of night when you're starting to get tired and like you don't really want to think that hard. I am enjoying the story so far, but I am getting to the point where I am ready for something new to happen because for 150 pages they've just been like riding through the country on a horse and then they stop for the night and stay in some abandoned house and then they ride on the horse again and nothing's really happening. It's really just like a lot of 
them communicating and like bantering back and forth as they're on these journeys but like there's really no plot to be had at this point she's basically just constantly trying to convince him to stop killing people and then he basically just constantly tells her to shut up and quit speaking and like that's kind of what's going on it's reminding me a lot of a book that i read last year what was it called soul eater i read that book last year and it kind of gave the same vibes where it was like these two people that were just trying traveling on foot across the country and it was literally just like they would walk for a really long time and then they would like stay in a hotel for the night and then they would walk for a really long time and there was never really anything more to the story. So I'm hoping there will be more to this story eventually and hopefully it will pick up soon because it's just it's getting to the point where I could get bored if something doesn't change. I'm hoping it'll pick up a little bit or at least like some of the plot points that I don't know what they are yet but that they will make themselves known or that the romance will start to pick up more because it really nothing has really happened with that yet one of those two things to start soon would be good but overall i'm entertained i'm enjoying it it's reading very quickly so it's it's perfect for this readathon i feel like so that's where i'm at reading wise i'm gonna brush my teeth put my pajamas on sit in bed which again could be my downfall here but i have to do it i'm so sick of the couch and i love my bed morning. I woke up around like eight, I think this morning. So I got like four and a half hours of sleep. But pretty much as soon as I opened my eyes, I started reading again. I have a couple updates. So last night after I updated you, I was planning to read more of Pestilence, but then I was like, I don't know. I just need to do something other than like ride on horseback through the country. So I decided to pick up Death Valley and really I traded one odd expedition for another because this is just like 200 130 pages of a woman wandering around in the desert. I got about a hundred pages into this one before I fell asleep last night and then as soon as I woke up today I started reading again and I actually just finished it. It is just almost 10 o'clock and I finished. So we have two books completed and we're like halfway through another one and 70 pages. I'm all over the place. So this book is following a woman whose father is in the hospital. He's had a really serious accident. He was like on life support. He's been in and out of consciousness and they're not really sure like if he's healing if he's gonna get better and she kind of like flees to the desert to deal with her grief I guess she's preemptively grieving she kind of does it under the guise of like research for a novel she's an author and basically her novel is supposed to be about like the realization of what love actually means but she goes out to the desert and she's staying at this best western and she gets instructions for this hike and when she goes out she finds this cactus and she like goes inside the cactus and she starts like seeing people and events from her past then she gets lost in the desert and she's kind of just like wandering around and simultaneously going through severe dehydration and having just a lot of realizations about life and grief and just the struggles of letting people in and loving people when you don't have that security of knowing that like they're always going to be around you never really know what's going to happen so it's just a lot of her self-discovery amidst a delirious like psychedelic state almost. I enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars. It read much faster than I was expecting to. I kind of 
felt like this was gonna read really slow. People compare this a lot to Bunny and I had a really hard time getting through Bunny so I was a little bit nervous about this but I, I didn't have that issue. It was I was able to read it very quickly which I was grateful for and I appreciate a lot of the messages in this book and it was an enjoyable read. Like it was it kind of was on the right level of trippy and weird for me because sometimes that can be overdone to the point that I don't like it. I felt like this was towing that line of like trippy enough that I could just be like yeah okay have your cactus moment like that's great but I wasn't ever getting too like this is crazy this is so ridiculous so I also appreciated that. I think the reason like 3.5 and not any higher necessarily is just that I don't feel like super emotionally attached to the character or to the story overall. Again, I appreciate the messages. I It was an entertaining read, but I don't think it's something that I'm going to remember forever. But three and a half feels good. That's still a good rating in my opinion. So now I'm thinking that I'm going to try to make some more progress with Pestilence for the next couple hours. I just made a little smoothie and I think later on in the day I'm going to try. I just got a walking pad. I've been wanting one forever and I finally got one. And I think later on I'm going to want to walk for a while so I'm kind of saving all the sinners bleed for that because I can listen to the audio and so I think until I'm ready to do that I'm gonna try to make more progress here so I feel like in the next couple of hours I could get almost done with it okay so I'm actually almost finished with the book I only have like 40 pages left but I just have to say this because the romance has obviously like picked up by now which is fine but our girl just was like drifting off to sleep and her thought was he'd make a good dad. He's literally murdered millions and millions of people since you've met him. And not all just like, oh, his silly little plague comes in and takes people out. Like some of it is like he just murders people for fun and like vengeance. I understand you're like in the honeymoon phase and you're all wrapped up in like your new boy toy, but like, let's be so honest. We have not seen a single sign that this man would make a good father. He does not have a paternal instinct in his body. And that just cracked me up. Why are we making her like baby crazy within a matter of sleeping with him like three times? I just, I don't necessarily think we need to be doing that. Also, the man's not even a human and his whole mission in life is to destroy all humans. So maybe not the number one candidate to procreate with. Okay, so for a quick time check, it is just about 12.30. 12:23 and I just finished Pestilence. So this is the third book of the readathon done. I think three stars for this. I feel a little bit conflicted just in the sense of like, I don't know, can you be like bored and not bored at the same time? Like it was entertaining to read and I got through it really fast. It was very easy. The writing was very simple and very digestible and I never like felt bored but every time I was checking in with myself it was like nothing is happening we are not doing anything this book just suffers from basically a complete lack of plot because the whole book is just them traveling around and him killing people or like giving people the plague and I think that it adds to like this just monotonous feeling because there's never an end goal there's never like an end destination they're not traveling to get to a particular place and his whole thing is like I I will stop when like my purpose has been fulfilled and he never like explains what that means so you're just like okay so indefinitely like we're just gonna keep traveling around and like watching people die if they had had a place they were trying to go or I don't know they just like there was no driving force of the book really at all but again I still got through it quickly so I don't really know like I feel like three stars is good like down the middle I don't I also don't feel like overly attached to the romance I guess I like them but like I'm not really rooting for them I'm not gonna like think about them forever they haven't set a standard for a fictional couple for me but at the same time I do want to read the next book I want to read about the other ones I want to know what is gonna happen I think I'm invested enough that I'm not gonna rate it below like a three star but I also hope I guess that the other books will maybe pick up on the plot a little bit and I guess I'm curious to see if these characters show up in the other books just because he's there bringing his 
plague and then like his brother's gonna show up and bring war and like is he gonna try to intervene now that he's found this human that he's in love with I don't know I'm curious to see if the plot will pick up I think I'm going to pick back up all the sinners bleed so I got 83 pages in yesterday and I'm getting hungry so I'm probably gonna make some lunch and then like I said I do really want to like try out my walking pad and I think I just want to like do a few other things because I've been reading just with my eyes for the last like four and a half hours. So I'm gonna put the audiobook on, get a couple things done. So I forgot to update when I got to the 50% mark, but I am now a little over 70% of the way through All the Sinners Bleed. I'm really enjoying this. I do think it feels quite different from S.A. Cosby's other books, or at least the two that I have read. I always describe them as like reading like action movies. I feel like that's how a lot of people describe them because they're just so fast paced and so high energy. This one feels more like a natural mystery, like just trying to figure out who is behind these murders in this town but it's not in a bad way I don't mean that to come off as a negative thing because I'm still really enjoying the book it just feels slightly different from what I've read from him in the past but it's going really well I feel like I don't have any theories as far as like who the killer is yet I am completely like mystified and I'm really just trying to let it come to me I'm not really trying to think too hard into it it is very heavily tied to like corrupted religion which is always something that that is... <laughs> I don't love to read about it because it makes me really upset, but I understand that that's also the point. Like, you are supposed to feel upset by people that are doing really terrible things in the name of religion. It's not something that I'm like, oh, I t I'm taking away from a rating of a book by any means. It's more so just one of those things as you're reading where it's like you just constantly feel frustrated by the actions that these people are taking and the things that they're doing. I'm gonna keep listening. I just wanted to give you an update before I finished it. I forgot to do my halfway check-in. So that's where we're at. Things are going really well. It's like 3.30 if I didn't already say that. So we have like three and a half hours of the actual technical readathon left and it's been so much fun. Hello. So it is now 6.09. There's technically about one hour left and I have finished All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. I think I'm going to give this a four and a half. I really enjoyed it. I think it's my favorite S.A. Cosby book I've read so far and I've given the other two four stars. So I obviously wanted to like give it credit and put it a little bit higher. I don't think I quite got the five star feeling necessarily. It's hard to explain. I don't have any big complaints, but it's not like a favorite of all time thriller, I guess. So I think I'm gonna say 4.5, which is still obviously an incredible rating. And this is an incredible book. I feel like the actual answer to everything, it's not delivered in a way that's gonna, that was like super shocking or overwhelming or like it didn't feel like anything too crazy going on, but I still enjoyed the story overall and the progression to learn all the information about what's been going on in the town and then obviously the town itself is just dealing with a lot of unrest there's a lot of like racial conversation and a lot of controversy and problems within the town of people who are just being racist and also people who are just trying to make sure that the case is properly paid attention to so there's also a lot of social commentary which S.A. Cosby has in literally every single one of his books he does it so well. I really enjoy his books. I'm glad I finally read this one. Four and a half. I'm very happy with that. Obviously, we still technically have an hour left and I think I might tap out, I guess. I was gonna like keep reading to try to get to the Luminous Dead, but then we started talking about pizza and I've now placed a Domino's order and I kind of just want to watch movies and eat my food now. So I feel pretty accomplished with having read four books in this little readathon. I'm very pleased with that progress. And if you are dying to see my thoughts about The Luminous Dead, I do plan to still read this this month. So there should for sure be thoughts about it in my August wrap up at the end of the month. And yeah, so that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.